Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight, a former minister responsible for the Disaster Recovery Authority says everything was done above board. The prime minister promises that his government is addressing inflation. The University of the Bahamas carries out living wage research. And a tragedy in Long Island prompts a health initiative. Welcome to our news weekend edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Former State Minister for Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction, Aram Lewis, on the defense once again. This time following the news that a forensic audit will be launched into the Disaster Recovery Authority. However, Lewis says everything was done transparently and up to standard. Our Berthony McDermott has that top story. Former Cabinet Minister Iram Lewis insisting everything was done above board in the Disaster Reconstruction Authority. Lewis was responding to questions surrounding DRA Chairman Alex Storr's announcement that a forensic audit will be conducted into operations of the authority, insisting the DRA was improperly managed. I did all that I could have as a minister of state, but we all know that the substantive minister uh, was the prime minister, and, uh, and he also um, um, was... was uh, uh, hands-on ensuring that that um, everything was done above board and there was transparency um, um, straight through. Um, the board information is available. What is not there, um, request it. I'm sure the files are there for all to see. In recent weeks, the former administration has been under intense scrutiny regarding operations at the DRA and recovery efforts on Abaco and Grand Bahama following Dorian. Stora said while the DRA was a good thought, it appears to have been grossly mismanaged and hampered by poor execution. A forensic audit is an examination of financial activities for which there might be suspicion or financial or operational impropriety. Lewis said as far as he's concerned, the board did its job, adding he doesn't think anything was hidden. Um, a report was tabled. I remember the last report was tabled by the last Minister of State, um, the then member for West Grand Bahama and Bimney, and it was tabled in Parliament. Um, so the information should be available for all to view and to, to assess and, and, and to, to see exactly what the facts are as opposed to just what is being said. Um, the facts are written down. And of course, the, the past managing director, as well as the chairman, um, who is responsible for day-to-day -day operation, they are available. And I'm sure any, any further questions, they, they will be able to answer. State Minister in the office of the Prime Minister, Miles Zerota, who has responsibility for the DRA, was asked if the audit's findings could result in criminal charges. I don't want to preempt. We ask for an investigation, and if those issues uh, were to come up, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I would like the facts to come out, and then a decision will be made with regards to those facts, if any. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. As consumers feel the pinch of rising prices, Prime Minister Philip Davis says his government is addressing the issues. Davis told reporters that whatever he can do to alleviate this burden will be done. We engaged wholesalers and retailers. I had a, an extensive meeting with them yesterday to identify means in which we could mitigate against, against the inflationary costs being passed down to the consumers and we have had a discussion and they've gone away committing themselves to to come up with ideas and to to mitigate the costs to the consumer davis said at the outcome of that meeting he received the commitment of wholesalers and retailers to buy local products in recent weeks local stores have warned consumers of rising prices with many locals expressing outrage over the news u.s inflation rose to 7.5 percent the bahamas imports nearly 90 percent of its food products 80 percent of which comes from the united states Super Values Chief Financial Officer Deborah Simonet recently urged Bahamians to budget their money and brace for price increases on grocery items. Simonet explained that Super Value suppliers are increasing their prices every day, forcing the food store chain to pass the cost on to consumers. Asked to respond to criticism regarding the addition of VAT on bread basket items, Davis said this. Insofar as this issue of VAT on the bread, bread basket items. You have to appreciate that bread, uh, bread basket items make up but a mere, a mere 10 or 15% of a, of a grocery bag. 
right? when you compare me take when you compare the savings if any on that compared to the savings that you'll get for the other uh, 80 percent on that grace you buy i think it's negligible more saving has been accrued to the consumer than any loss to the consumer what does the cost of peanuts have to do with the living wage? Researchers at the University of the Bahamas have taken a closer look at how much it really costs to make a living in the Bahamas. And some results were surprising. Christina Dragovich reports. The cost of peanuts in Nassau is a dollar from the peanut man. In Freeport, the cost of peanuts is two dollars. And so we didn't know that. Policy fellow at the University of the Bahamas Government and Public Policy Institute, Leslie Archer, collaborated on living wage research in the Bahamas. The living wage differs from the minimum wage, which is mandated by law. What researchers found was that the cost of living varied between New Providence and Grand Bahama. When we went into the stores, we went into a mini mart, a uh, regular food store and a wholesaler, but their options were very limited compared to what was available in New Providence. Looking at the cost of three well-balanced meals and snacks, Archer and her team found that on New Providence, $10 per day per person is achievable. However, to replicate that same meal plan on Grand Bahama would cost $13 per person per day. I can't imagine what it would be if we did also Exuma or Inagua or Andrus, um, how varied the responses would be. The Davis administration has promised to increase minimum wage from $210 to $250 and introduce a livable wage. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. Doctors Hospital is launching an initiative on Long Island with the aim of equipping residents on that island with sustainable tools to assist in life-threatening emergencies. Jared Higgs has more. When 20-year-old Mandy Konsatakis Jr., his 18-year-old cousin Manoli, and their friend, 18-year-old Trevon Roxbury, died in a car crash back in January, many Long Islanders lamented the state of healthcare on the island. 18-year-old Manoli was still alive after the accident and was airlifted to New Providence more than five hours later, much to his family's dismay. While they aren't making a grandiose promise, Doctors Hospital CEO Dr. Charles Diggis says there are practical things that can be done to help save lives on remote islands. But we look at it in terms of what's practical, what's appropriate for that community, what can they own, and what can be perpetual or what can be sustained. Diggis says there's no benefit to doctor's hospital showing up like a flash, then disappearing. He says their focus will be on educating providers and getting them advanced life support certification. In addition, they will run code simulations every six months. And that would give them an opportunity just to go through the practice. What would you do in the event that? And that would be a way of keeping them in tune with what they need to be doing because we know in many communities codes are very rare and so the the importance of just periodic practice keeping people familiar of course residents on remote islands want as much access to physical resources as possible after the accident minister of health dr michael darville responded saying we must and can do better as a nation he says work is underway to make the hospital in exuma a hub for the southern islands and while he acknowledges that something like an advanced ambulance may be a necessary solution, Dr. Diggis believes a foundation needs to be laid first. Our focus has to be on maintaining life at each step, not the flash. You know, it's tempting to say let's put a, an advanced ambulance in a community. At some point that may be important, but my contention is that that's not the first thing you want to do. The first thing you want to do is to recognize that at any point, anywhere in a community, something significant can happen. Reporting for our news, I am Jared Higgs. Meantime, the Free National Movement holding a press conference earlier this afternoon to announce its plans for the party's upcoming convention. The convention is slated for Wednesday, February 23rd through Friday, February 25th. 
Several party officer positions will be decided, including deputy leader, chairman, and deputy chairman. Our news team also understands that the convention was set to be held virtually. However, the FNM party has since decided to hold it in person at the Atlantis Resort. And still to come on our News Weekend Edition, we are going to take a look at helping the less fortunate through a feeding network. And a woman gets a life-changing surgery. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. You're watching our news weekend edition. Welcome back. Just when circumstances were beginning to get better for thousands of Bahamians who were struggling during the pandemic, a nonprofit organization says the need is still great. Here again is Christina Dragovich. There are people, many people, who still can't find enough food to eat. Reverend Lester Ferguson is the executive director of the Bahamas National Feeding Network. As a nonprofit, the feeding network helps thousands of Bahamians to keep food on the table. As we enter the third year of the pandemic, Ferguson says some Bahamians are still forced to make tough financial decisions. A lot of persons have exhausted whatever savings they had during the pandemic. It means they have to juggle now, do I pay rent or do I buy food? Do I send my child to school or do I go to the clinic? Those kinds of decisions. Just when economic circumstances were beginning to look a little better, pockets and family budgets took another hit. Yes, there are those who have gone back to work and um, you know some have begun to um, restore or to replenish their income, but there are others who haven't. And then when we look at the it, the rise in the cost of grocery items, which is a global problem, you know, that has not made it any easier. Adding 10% uh, VAT on bread basket items certainly did not make it any easier, uh, not for families and certainly not for organizations such as ours, which depended heavily on purchasing uh, non-taxable uh, bread pass basket items. Those rising prices have led to an increase in operating costs for the organization as it works to serve families throughout the Bahamas. A woman diagnosed with fibroids and severe anemia is celebrating modern medicine and the relief of normal monthly cycles after she says doctors saved her life. Christina Dragovich has her story. I didn't have excruciating pain, but I bled heavily like a fire hydrant. Like Tamisha Knowles says she was suffering from heavy, unrelenting periods since 2017 when doctors discovered three fibroids in her uterus. The benign tumors were small at the time, so Knowles chose a holistic treatment plan to manage them rather than surgery or a possible hysterectomy. I'm a young girl. I mean, I have a little age on me, but who wants? I don't want to be um, pre-menopausal. By 2020, her fibroids had grown and she needed to take action. That's when she met Dr. Mikhail Higgins, an interventional radiologist at Family Medicine Center. I think when I initially started, I, I underestimated how life-changing fibroids were um, to a woman's and life. Being able to see women who have been silently suffering with bleeding issues to the point whereby they're soaking through their clothes on a monthly basis, having to call out of work on a monthly basis, having to put tarp on their beds because um, they're bleeding through their sheets. Dr. Higgins specializes in the endovascular management of uterine fibroids. What it looks like when you sort of see this on, on my monitor is it looks like a, a lush, you know, big sapodilla tree in the spring, okay? And if you were to then transplant that sapodilla tree to, to, to Boston, um, you know, in the winter time, you know, it then sort of kind of loses all its luster, its trees, it, the, the branches, everything sort of then shrivels. Knowles had the procedure done in November 2021 and now it was unbelievable i'm still waiting <laughs> to have this heavy period and everything is normal the flow i guess it's normal but i'm not accustomed to it and i still could feel 
the shrinkage every other day like stuff going on um and so this is the new me and i love it <laughs> Noel says the procedure saved her life. She used to compare herself to the lady with the issue of blood in the Bible, but now she feels as though the Lord used Dr. Higgins, so she no longer had to suffer in silence. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. When our news comes back from the break, we will take a trip down to Grand Bahama for our Grand Bahama in Focus segment. And the Bahamas All-Star Marching Band is on the move. We have the details when our news weekend edition returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news weekend edition. Welcome back. Some much needed good news for the island of Grand Bahama as a new boutique cruise ship, the Ocean Voyager, will now make a free port a part of its southeast itinerary. Vice President of Marine Operations, American Queen Voyages, Bill Anan says an array of well-traveled passengers will now be visiting Grand Bahama's shores. Passengers tend to be very well traveled. They've been on river, river cruises and small ship cruising around the world, big ship cruising around the world, and they, they like our small boutique type of uh, experience. Well, it's quite nice, especially this time of year. We, this voyage goes as far north as Charleston, and then we work our way south, so it's quite nice to be in the warm weather. It's, it was a little cool in Charleston, um, but no, our passengers are thrilled. Manager at the Ministry of Tourism, Nuvolari Chodasing, calling the arrival exciting news. We really appreciate them coming. And as you mentioned earlier, you heard uh, that this will become a regular 10-day uh, spot for the uh, American Voyages Organization. And it represents, uh, even those 200 passengers, we see them as 200 potential investors to Grand Bahama. And so we're looking forward to having them here. Noting the variety of activities that passengers can enjoy on the island, he notes that this new cruise ship could be a much needed economic boost. We have over 40 uh, different activities here on Grand Bahama Island and those activities range from uh, to the very young to the not so young to take part in and I'm sure that our tour operators would be more than happy to have them and also uh, accommodate them in any which way they can. Well with the ship coming in uh, the vendors here at the uh, harbor have an opportunity if they so desire to be open and also uh, those taxi drivers and others who are in the business, uh, this represents an opportunity for them as well. A plaque exchange was held between the Ministry of Tourism, the Freeport Harbor Company, and Ocean Voyages to mark the occasion. The Bahamas All-Stars Youth Development Organization is celebrating the band's successes, experiences, and growth over the past 11 years by putting together a video documentary. The band's founder and director, Yonel Justilian, says that this program has provided hundreds of students with opportunities, such as international travel, college scholarships, and career development. So we seek to uh, attract all, you know, performing as talented kids in the area of uh, you're talking about wind instruments, percussion instruments, we look for dancers, and you must have some uh, level of, you must have basic skills. Not, we don't start you from scratch, but we'll take you to the next level. It's, it's a, like a stepping stone to get you into a uh, university, preparing the kids to uh, take on audition, audition processes. See, from, from our successes, we know kids, the kids have gotten a lot of, they got, get, get a lot of training. Uh, we have trained trained persons here who uh, will take the kids, you know, take them back to the fundamentals that's required uh, in the workplace or in any in any given institution. And um, I can say now, we, if we look at all of the major major public schools and high school uh, music educators, uh, you'll find that almost 80 percent of them uh, fr uh, went through this program. Uh, band directors, that is. Now, despite restrictions imposed due to the pandemic, Justilian says that they are currently averaging about 100 students, ages 13 to 18, who are all excited about returning to their beloved instruments. He shares his hopes for the band moving forward. 
Well, we're going to ask some of the uh, younger persons who been through the program and now they're in the workplace, whether they're music educators or working in other areas, to come in and assist as well. Uh, I think it's always good to uh, have a succession of persons in place uh, just to assist. And, and I won't be here forever, but to see uh, follow for, you know, my fellow uh, members come in, come in and you know, carry the same mantle. Uh, so when you find persons here that, that, have, that share the same vision, uh, it makes life much easier. And I think the kids themselves uh, are being empowered. When you see multiple kids in, in, in families, like two brothers or two sisters and three siblings going, on, going off to college, uh, had, hadn't it been for performing arts, they probably wouldn't be in those positions. Still to come, our Marcellus Hall has the latest in sports, and we'll take a look at what weather is going to be like for the upcoming week. That's coming up when our News Weekend Edition returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news weekend edition. I'm Megan Shepard. And now here's our Marcellus Hall with the latest in sports. Welcome to your Sunday Sports Check, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Busy weekend for track and field here in the country. B3A's DLT time trials. And they held their classic on Saturday at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The event hosted by the Roadrunners was extremely well attended with uh, athletes coming in from all the various track and field groups, including the Striders, Hurry Murray, Boost Athletics, DTSP Wolfpack, the Roadrunners, as well as Fast Forward, the Speed Kids, and let's not, of course, forget Star Trackers. All were in attendance for this one, and all with a full complement of athletes, despite, despite having some of those athletes abroad competing in Kentucky. As you mentioned, there were some great events taking place, including the 100 meters, the 200s, the field events, and the fours, 1500s also taking place during the course of the weekend with everything wrapping up with the four by one relays. All in all, event coordinators very pleased with what took place and looking forward to the next event, which is coming up around the corner. Again, a lot of qualifying standards being achieved with Carifta coming up in April. So this is a huge event once again, making sure that these athletes have the opportunity to step on the track and get those qualification times in. Some other news now, one of our local baseball players in college this time, Dante Stewart, starting up his college baseball season off with a bang. There are two games in his pl under the plate so far. Dante looks pretty good. Plays for the Demon Deacons. He got two for four in his first game with a double and a single, and then came back and hit a one for four day with a double there as well. So his team off to a 2-0 and start, and Dante making his presence felt to this point. That's your check on sports. I'm Marcella Saul. Enjoy your Sunday. And now, here's a look at weather. And that's going to do it for us tonight, our News Weekend Edition. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in.